Hello there hoppers and welcome. Now you have to forgive me today because I have got tonsillitis and it is very difficult to talk so if I sound a bit off I do apologise. But anyway I just thought I had to get this video out here because we have just had some new Jurassic World content released. A new teaser trailer dropped for the highly secretive Jurassic World themed Netflix show. And, you know, it's been weeks since the reveal of its name being, of course, Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. You know, it flagged a lot in the fandom. A lot of people were asking just what it could be. You know, what could this collaboration be? Well, thanks to this newly released trailer and an actual announcement by DreamWorks Animation themselves, we can now confirm that the show will be a new animation series taking place during the events of Jurassic World. And all I can say is, if the show looks anything like this teaser trailer we've been shown, then it's going to be incredible, because the visuals here are just gorgeous. So, without further ado, let's get straight into the footage breakdown. So, here we go. As the trailer begins, the camera awakes into a lush, overgrown jungle, and in the near distance there are the thunderous bellows of familiar creatures. It then cuts to display a message. The evolution. We then return to the green wilderness before cutting away yet again, this time to display another message. Has. We are then thrown back into the overgrowth to the sight of a ferocious looking velociraptor. It then trumpets a deafening call as the screen goes black one last time. Begun. As the music builds we are then thrown back in with the raptor. It turns its head in a sudden reflex of instinct before the music abruptly cuts and the raptor charges us for the kill. So as you can see there isn't much shown in this teaser trailer but it's certainly done its job at teasing our interest. You know it certainly has mine. I like the fact that the, the text appears very reminiscent of the Lost World Jurassic Park's teaser trailer. And you know put that along with the current sound design it really does build a very quick sense of atmosphere as well as suspense especially when the music gets more dramatic. And you know, if this is the quality of animation, you know, sounds and music that will be presented come the show's 2020 release, then all I can say is, sign me up, you know, <laughs> we're in for one hell of a ride. Because, you know, this just looks awesome. I really do think this looks great. I mean, I don't want to raise my hopes up too much because, you know, <laughs> we see it all the time in game trailers, you know, they always tend to... You know, the, a lot of game trailers just consist of using cutscenes instead of actual footage. You know, I really do hope that it is genuinely the quality that, you know, we will be seeing. And it's not just, like I said, a glorified cutscene to get us hooked. But, either way, visual spectacle aside, let's now discuss the actual premise of the show. So, from the DreamWorks announcement, we have the following. Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous follows a group of six teenagers chosen for a once-in-a-lifetime experience at a new adventure camp on the opposite side of Isla Nublar. But when dinosaurs wreak havoc across the island, the campers are then stranded. Unable to reach the outside world, they'll need to go from strangers to friends to family if they are going to survive. So, this is sounding like a great opportunity for not only some high stakes, you know, suspenseful moments, but also a chance to correct what, in my opinion, was Jurassic World's and, hell, even Fallen Kingdom's biggest crime, and that is not showing us more of the resort. So here they have a golden opportunity to show us some of the scenery we never got to see in either of the films. You know, say what you want about the films as, as a whole, but you cannot deny that Jurassic World looked like an amazing place to visit. I know I would have booked a ticket if they were selling them. You know, and you know, it would seem that it is now a perfect opportunity to show more of the island we never saw in the films. You know, and we can see this throughout, throughout a handful of episodes. And that's what's really great about TV shows, you know. A series of episodes is much better in, in these cases than just one film. Because when you're making a singular film, you know, there is no guarantee of a sequel or a franchise. Therefore, at the very least, you have to make sure that you're able to establish the world the film takes place in, develop the characters, and of course, fulfil the film's plot. And that's without everything else you need to keep the audience in their seats. You know, all this has to be squeezed and compressed into just a couple of hours. 
And this is why some films have no choice but to become these lengthy epics, because the source material is just too large to shorten. However, that is the beauty of television. You have the expansion over an entire series of episodes to get your world established, to fulfil your plot, and therefore you are able to actually focus more time on developing characters over the course of all the episodes, because there is much more time to play with. So there is so much potential when it comes to TV shows, you know, as long as they're treated correctly. Now personally, I would do what the Gotham TV series failed to do, and that is to start not just at the beginning, but just before the beginning. You know, don't start episode one with Bruce's parents being shot, or in this case, the Indominus breaking out. You know, let's spend a few episodes with, you know, his parents still alive. You know, we get to see his relationship with them. And that way, when they get killed, it has more of an impact. But, of course, translated into what I'm trying to say about Camp Cretaceous, you know, let's spend a few episodes of the characters enjoying the park getting to know each other as characters, as people, and therefore when all hell inevitably breaks loose, we will be able to feel more for each character because we would have made a somewhat of a connection or an understanding of who and what they're about. And it's the same for the actual characters in the show. Because they would have built bonds, they would then get strained or, you know, I mean, have more of an effect if one of them was to get killed or something else was to happen. You know, so I think there's so much potential for that. You know, because they've actually got, had time to get to know them. And we've had a great opportunity to get to enjoy some of the park we never saw. You know, this is what I'm saying. When you've got a TV show, you can expand it. It doesn't matter if the first three episodes, nothing major's happened. You can build to it. There's no reason why the first few episodes can't be them just enjoying the island. Hell, episode one should really be their individual stories getting to the island. So we get to know them a bit before they're on the island, and then there may be an episode or two of them together on the island getting to know each other, and then, then shit goes down. You know, and this is a golden opportunity, like I said, for the character development. I mean, it says it in the description. They said they go from strangers to friends to family. You know, it is a perfect opportunity to show this. And it's a perfect opportunity to actually show different sides of people. You know, like, for example, there could be, like, this tough jock, you know, Mr. Cool Guy, maybe a bit of a bully, you know, he's so cocksure of himself, you know, He's just an arsehole kind of thing. And I, now, I'm not saying I want this kind of character in the show, and by the looks of things, we're definitely not, but just bear with me for a second. It's just an example. Um, but you could have him, for example, and then you could have this kind of... He's contrasted by this complete polar opposite where you've got this really like small, shy guy who's like really anxious and maybe a bit antisocial, and yet when shit hits the fan, shall we say... You know, they show their real colours. You know, they're all revealed. Maybe the tough jock becomes a nervous wreck and he's terrified beyond belief. And maybe the quiet shy guy becomes more dominant, you know, becomes the voice of reason. Maybe acts as a true leader for the group, you know. These are just a few examples off the top of my head. But as you can see, there is so much potential for these kind of developments and conflicts, for that matter. Anyway, moving on now quickly, I would just like to discuss this giant structure that stands dominantly in the centre of the poster. You see, it appears to be a Jurassic World entrance gate, but in the style of Jurassic Park. And what I mean by this is that it bears the Jurassic Park colour scheme of red, yellow and black, and not the Jurassic World colours that we've become accustomed to, of blue, white and silver. A colour scheme that seems consistent throughout the entire resort. So, the fact that they have opted for this throwback colour scheme, as it were, it's very compelling. I mean, hell, maybe they just fancied a change, but... Personally, I think this could be a hidden message of sorts. You know, maybe it's a hint that part of Camp Cretaceous is exploring the ruins of the old park. Because let's face it, it's not exactly a secret anymore. Everyone knows that the park once existed. Hell, even on the monorail, staff announced to the guests that the Jurassic World gate was built using salvaged materials from the original park. So yeah, it's definitely not a secret. And because of its past and its now surely legendary status, the Jurassic Park ruins would be like the holy grail for enthusiasts. It's like the island's own Atlantis. This lost world where it once all began and where life unforgivingly found a way. 
And remember, this group have been chosen for this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So maybe this is what that is. Maybe their once-in-a-lifetime opportunity is exploring the ruins of the old park. Maybe it's part of the Camp Cretaceous adventure. And remember, the Cretaceous period was when the dinosaurs became extinct. And in comparison to Jurassic World at this point, Jurassic Park met with the same fate. Becoming Jurassic ruins, and then inevitably, Cretaceous camp. But, of course, it's all just speculation. You know, there is no evidence currently to back this up. You know, the chances are they just called it Camp Cretaceous because they thought it sounded cool. Either way, I guess only time will tell. Now, before I wrap things up, there is one last point that I would like to quickly discuss. And that is, who was the raptor in the footage? I mean, we know the show takes place during the events of the Jurassic World film because we've been told as much. So this can't just be a random raptor. It would have to be one of the four in Owen's pack as they are the only ones that exist on the island at this time. Now instantly, you'd think they would use blue, seeing as the filmmakers have gone well out of their way, it would seem, to make blue and this lovable anti-hero of sorts. You know, she's the mascot of the current franchise. However, judging by the lack of blue stripe and the fact that this raptor seems to have a green hue to it, I think it's safe to say that this is not blue. In fact, it's most likely Charlie or even possibly Delta, as the pair do have a similar green design. However, whereas as Charlie has black stripes running down her neck to her tail, Delta does not. And another quick glance at our raptor from the trailer footage reveals none other than black stripes running from the neck to the tip of the tail. So I think it's safe to say with at least some certainty that the culprit is in fact Charlie. And you know, now given this new knowledge, it does actually make me wonder, you know, whether or not Charlie would be one of the main antagonists of this show. You know, maybe as a reoccurring threat, because these protagonists will have to survive something. You know, and we can already rule out Rexy because at this point she is under lock and key until the last breath of the film. So my guess is, is they'll have to escape situations involving pterosaurs, possibly the Indominus Rex at some point, and of course Charlie the Raptor as probably their most frequent threat. Because why else would you show her hunting on her own, specifically her, if she wasn't of some relevance to this new show? Either way, I guess as always, only time will tell. Well Hoppers, that just about does it for this video. I apologise if this was a bit of a rough one vocally for you guys, but you know, as I said at the beginning, I am, I've currently got tonsillitis and it's causing me all kinds of jip. But still, the show must go on, and rest assured, regardless of my physical condition, as soon as any new information drops regarding this show, or anything Jurassic related for that matter, I'm going to be all over it. Plus, I already have a lot more Jurassic content on the way. So, if you haven't already, why not consider subscribing to the channel? That way you're showing your support, and also not missing out on any of the new content. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I have. Take care, hoppers, and I'll see you next time.